Hey everybody, it's another episode of Go Flix Yourself. My name is Ben Conowitz, and with me as always is the the Darren to my Modoc, Brad for Omen. Hey, that's me. I got a big old head. Darren? Yeah. And uh, you know what? My my pink friend with a bunch of holes, Nate Laux. Oh. I've got holes. <laughs> Gross. That's a that's a little, little bit of a that's, that's, seven that's a, of them. Keeping it spoiler free ish. About Ant Man and the Wasp. Did you guys? Did you guys count your holes after that? Because he's like everybody did. <laughs> well, yeah. for a second I was confused because I thought they were counting the eyes as holes, and I was like, no, no, we got no more. I, so right. here's what I did, right? So for those of you who don't know, and this is not a spoiler, so we'll just say it. There's a moment in the film where one character says to a human, uh, somebody says like, "Well, how many holes do you have?" And somebody else says, "He has seven holes." And Paul Rudd's face is on the screen for long enough where I'm like starting to count the holes. Yep. I'm like ear, ear, nostril, nostril, mouth, butt, penis. Oh, yeah, no, that's seven. It was just really funny because yeah. the whole audience was doing the math at the same time. And it was really. Anyway, this is a movie podcast, guys. Welcome. If you listen, by the way, if you are honest to goodness reviewing us on our on our podcast website or, or anywhere, it brings us tremendous joy we talk about it for like half an hour before the show so if that helps you or encourages you if you're a listener and you want to reach out and actually leave a review my god do we love it and it just gives us so much joy so please and thank you uh rate us five stars or any stars whatever uh we we, we just love you yeah do it on the website do it on apple anywhere, podcast anywhere. Do, it, do it on stitcher do it on spotify send us a message i don't care it doesn't yeah. matter i don't care we love you so much it's a long and dark winter in, in northern <laughs> Indiana. In northern Indiana. We, we need this. <laughs> uh, so Nate Laux, Brad Fernoman, Ben Conowitz, we're here. If you're a first-time listener, Brad uh, writes for SlashFilm.com. He's a very talented uh, movie writer. Just write. You don't, he's don't edit, He's the editor. Him. Sorry, so he's, you're, the, you're the editor. I mean, yeah, if anything, I, I edit more than I write. Yeah, now, I so. look for his so articles, sorry. and I'm he so doesn't sorry. really write anymore. I'm, I'm so a, sorry. I'm, a, I'm an idea man, and I- uh, No, you are- a, you you're are part over, of, Oversee the quality of the site. You are part of solver. being the man. You are the man. Yeah, yeah. sure. sure. If, yeah. The, if, the, if the website yeah. was, was, was bread and jelly, guess what this man is? Peanut, Peanut butter. butter. Keeping it all together. This sticky stuff, keeping it all together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nate Laux uh, and, and Ben Conowitz, we are just avid movie watchers. We're okay. We're okay. Uh, so, Brad, as we always, uh, just to write off this up, do we have a sponsor? You know, you know we do. I, you, I mean, I know you we know do. It. You, you know it. I don't know what it is, but I knew we had a sponsor. You know we do. You know, and we're in between holidays right now. You know, we just we just finished up Valentine's Day, but we got. We got St. Patrick's Day coming up, and that's not really a treat holiday. Like, also, wish you could just see his shimmer. They do right a little. Now. Did you say a little shimmy and shake? They yeah. do some green beer. They do some St. Patrick's Day clover coffee, coffee co- cookies. Woo. <laughs> they do both. They do have. They do have some some leprechaun coffee, leprechaun coffee. Uh, <laughs> but All right, have you had an Irish coffee today? Is that what's going on? I wish. I wish I did. <laughs> uh, but no. But Easter's coming up. Yes, you Easter know? is coming up. Easter, so we're in this in between. I brought. I brought if you brought a, peeps, I will leave. I didn't. I have. Okay. I, I I I will have plenty of Easter. I've peeps before, I think, though. I did. I, I, we'll have plenty of Easter snacks to come. Don't you worry, my I'm friend. worried. I am worried. Don't you worry a, your beer, pretty little bearded a full, face. A full month and a half between now and Easter, and there's going to be plenty oh of God. treats for your little basket. For those of you <laughs> listening, that's a threat. That is a threat. It's a promise. No, boy. What do you got? Uh, I, so I, I brought I brought some treats. Uh, these... <laughs> So these these came out around Christmas, but they also came back around Valentine's Day. I feel like they're going to come out whenever there's like holiday stuff happening. Uh, Duncan, formerly Dunkin' Donuts, has their own donut inspired chocolates with three different flavors. What? And I'm gonna, yeah, and I'm going to spread them out. I'm going to give get this each is of you the one. worst thing you brought. I was just saying, this doesn't sound yeah, bad. Exactly. Right, right off the bat, I'm not retching. So ben, this is good. Ben, you get brownie batter. Okay. Uh, Nate, you get uh, it's wrapped up in its individual little. You get Boston cream. Brown what is Boston bag. cream, by the way? It's the donut that has so chocolate. I know top. what it is, but like, <laughs> what is, <laughs> why is it called that? Yeah, why is it called that? Because they, they originated in Boston. Yeah. So After they got quality. done throwing the tea, and I got chocolate cream as mine. Oh, so it's like a it's like a, a filled it's like a filled chocolate. It is, is a cho- it is a chocolate that resembles a donut, and it's got filling. It's really good. I like this. Yeah, I could eat that. Of course you could. They're delicious. Good They're job, buddy. I like them. Well, hey, hey for, this is the best thing you've done. Yeah, in a long time. I'm dunking it. You know, lately you've been on a kind of a tear. 
bringing some special treats, and we, we appreciate you, buddy. What can I say? So like, where do you get those? Do you have to go to the Dunkin' stores to get them? No, no, they have them. Like, you go to Walgreens, you can go to CBS and Walmart, and they got they got them. So, if you ever uh, want to know more about the crap that Brad eats, they can find it on Brad's <laughs> shop. <laughs> I love that description. Yeah, you want to know about the shit that he pours in his face hole? <laughs> I think, I'm going to make that my, my official Instagram profile. If you want to know about the crap that I eat. No, Brad's junk. Look at Brad's junk. At look at Brad's junk on Instagram, I post about new snacks. How many followers you got now? Fashion. I just crossed six thousand. Are you going to post these on there, or did you already? Uh, so I posted them when they first came out last year. Oh he yeah, this is, old, this is old news that he's bringing. Post to the them podcast. again, then a link to our podcast. Yeah, but right? I, but they just, they just came back. So yeah, yeah, post them again, a link to our podcast. I'm not I'm not asking you. <laughs> <laughs> What's old is new again. Yeah. So yeah, yeah retro uh, is in. Yeah, happy. Uh, so again, th- uh, thank you, artist formerly known as Dunkin' Donuts. We, we, do. we appreciate you, Dunkin', for legitimately writing a check so we'll, we can have your product on the show. If you are a major corporation in the United States of America, worldwide, you'd like to sponsor an episode of Gold Flakes yourself, it costs twenty seven cents. You just send that check, and we will absolutely take good care of you. Thanks, Hasbro. Yeah, for the price of a cup of coffee. Oh. Anyway, uh, trailer time. No, what are you doing? Movies? You don't. It's like you haven't done the podcast have for like have, a year. We, we we take a week off, Game. and all of a sudden we're gonna play a game. Uh, he's a broken man. Have you brought a sponsor? Oh boy. Okay. Uh, so real quick, Brad, you have you have a you had a lot of catching up to do. What do you so mean? I would really like to know. Well, you're you're seventeen. You're nineteen movies behind. You have not watched a movie since two thousand and twenty-two. Here's here's the thing. <laughs> I'm I'm a man of the world. Okay. You are, I, okay? I will agree with that. I, ha- I have. I you are had, a worldly. You man. are a world traveler. I had. I'm a world traveler. I had, I had traveling to do. Also, m- some assholes gave me two three-hour movies back to back. I will okay. point out though that you couldn't even watch the 52-minute movie. I, I will yep. point out to you that I'm a busy motherfucker. <laughs> are you? Yeah. Are you? Okay. Okay. Listen. Did my, you my, have? Did my, you have time to watch it or not? My you gave me Titanic. My girlfriend likes to watch movies, and she doesn't always want to watch the bullshit that you give me. Yeah, which is why oh, I didn't like, watch Fiddler on the Roof. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nate. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't watch Fiddler. On oh, the okay. Time. You had an extra week. I did. Well, no, I didn't. You did. You did. You asked a week ahead of time for the movie. Oh, that's right. I. I was, I was a busy man. My girlfriend doesn't had, want to sit down gutter con. and watch a Terrence Malick movie. Why not? About Just, about a German man who refuses to fight for the Nazis for World War II. A real movie. It's a real story about hey, a peacemaker. Hey, Blessed are the peacemakers. Hey, it's a good movie. And it doesn't feel like a regular Terrence Malick movie. <laughs> it, it feels like probably his most accessible movie. Most people ever, probably don't know made. what a real Terrence Malick film feels like. Explain a little bit what... Have you ever seen paint you, drying? N- no. no. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. They're, they're, no, if anything, it, there's actually a lot of movement. Beautiful, it's just, beautiful cinematography. I'm sorry. Have you ever ever seen a jackson pollock painting dry <laughs> maybe a little more like that but. beautiful cinematography uh a narrative that is is a little disjointed but purposefully so um and it's it has a very abstract feeling to it terrence malick is a f- is a filmmaker that uh college filmmakers getting their mfa love Brad, because Brad, he's making stories name, that name other terrence of for 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 our listeners that are, that are me name four other oh, terrence Jesus malick Christ. movies uh four <laughs> Tree, I mean, seriously. Tree of Life is probably like one of the more famous ones that he's so you've never he, even heard he's of done it. recently. You've never seen Tree I've of Life? I've never even heard of it. I, I would definitely I see guarantee, it. I think you've heard of it. If, if you saw the trailer, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing the trailer. I know that movie. Terrence Malick is a director. I know that. I, I know that maybe I thought he was an author, but now now that you say he's a director, he is. Terrence Malick is also a, a, like a, a filmmaker that I think very serious actors want to be in his films. Absolutely. Because he is a, 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 he is a renowned filmmaker. He, he is a filmmaker that filmmakers love. He is just not as accessible as like a Steven Spielberg, who is, yeah. again, a filmmaker's filmmaker. But, but now, now, this Spielberg you speak of. But So he did uh, The New World, which, again, I thought was a lot more accessible as well for a Terrence, Terrence Malick Colin film. Colin Farrell's in that movie. Um, he he did also- this, actually, one of his most famous, famous one was The Thin Red Line. Did you yeah, see that one? I haven't seen that one, but it's a war movie. Yep. That's Michael J. Fox. That's that's casualties of war. Uh, no, no, I think that Michael J. Fox was in Thin Red Thin Red Light. Knight of Cops or is. Knight of Cups to the Wonder uh, Tree of Life. I would love to see Terrence Malick do a movie called Knight of Cops. <laughs> A buddy cop let's film. Let's be let's be cops too. <laughs> Terrence Malick does a buddy cop film. Yeah, uh, yeah. Badlands to the Wonder. He's uh, he's done stuff that you've probably seen the trailers for, and you've thought, oh, that looks beautiful. Uh, no. Typically, people either love Terrence Malick or they just tolerate Terrence Malick. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff, but I I know a Terrence Malick movie when I I see the trailer for it. Friend of the pod, Andrew Desam, who we had on maybe five four months ago, maybe, um, is a huge Terrence Malick fan. Yeah, he just he got me into Terrence Malick. And I'm like you. I I enjoy some Terrence Malick stuff. 
I, I, I am patient through some Terrence Malick stuff, but I actually did enjoy this film. If I haven't made it clear yet, yeah. the movie I was talking about is called A Hidden Life, and it actually is about a man in Germany who refuses to fight for the Nazis during World War II, uh, and it just follows his story. And uh, yeah, it is. It is a great. It's a. It's a very. Uh, harrowing uh beautiful drama and i can see why why you like it and like you said if nothing else the cinematography is beautiful right stunning it is it is one of those incredible picturesque landscapes that is it just seems like it should be on a a a canvas somewhere it is that beautiful kind of film absolutely sweeping shots yeah uh, usually fairly good soundtracks these kind of things you know a score behind it so the beauty movie is beautiful for terrence malick films though I, i for me anyway as somebody that needs a lot of energy in films, I have to like almost slow my heart down before a Terrence Malick yeah. film because, and it, it is a he is a filmmaker that I have to be in the right mood for to sure, watch for sure. Uh, because I, it's not just a, a very accessible. Film yeah, Ben, you'd be pretty mad, guys. Michael J. Fox was in Casualties of War. Oh boy, not a thin red line. The thin red line. It wasn't in that one either. Breaking news. Breaking news. Thank you. So thanks for that. Just pointing that out. Alex Better, P. Keaton. Not in a thin red line. Michael P. Keaton, not. Hey, while we're talking about line. Alex P. Keaton, do you remember what the name of that documentary that's coming out uh, that you saw at Sundance for him was? I hope I do because I saw it and yeah, I, I, say, I did a review of it. Yeah, what was it called again? It's called Still a Michael J. Fox Movie. If you guys get a chance to see that coming out hopefully soon, um, like for the rest of us, yeah. you really like that one, right? Oh, yes, yeah, it's fantastic. Got it now. Yeah, still. The thing well, he can't do. I know. That's a weird title. What else did you see? Also still because he's resilient. Not really the same thing. It is. That's why that's why the title is Still because he's resilient? Yeah, because he's been through Parkinson's it's, it's and like he, still here? Yeah, exactly. So call it still here. Oh boy. You know, we'll send that note up. Um, <laughs> Brad, what was, else did you that see? That was so mean. <laughs> You were so mean just now. He's right, though. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Brad's, Brad's wearing off on me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send that note up, dick. <laughs> wow, Nate. Hey, okay. Well. Hey, jog on. All right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Brad, what else you watch? I also watched Charlie Chaplin's The Kid, uh, which does not have Bruce Willis or Spencer Breslin in it's it. Not, and, it's and not I was, Disney's I was the kid. very disappointed to find out. But no. And it's black and white. Uh, this that's is tough. A, this is a it's a classic um comedy with a little bit of drama in it too. Uh it is uh not quite a I guess you could, it's it's technically a feature length movie, but it's it's just around an hour, a little little less. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brett, but this is not a talkie, correct? No, you were wrong. <laughs> this is not a talkie. No, no. You're wrong. It's a talkie? No, of course not. But <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's it's a silent movie. So yeah, it is. Uh, it's the kind of silent movie where the dialogue is comes up in bumpers, cards. And t- title cards in between. Because he's a, he's one of those rare actors that bridges that, right? So he's got films that the Great Dictator, for example, are talkies, right? They're, yeah. they're films that actually Shawshank yeah. Redemption. <laughs> it's a big Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> but no. Uh, so this movie, it's uh, it follows Charlie Chaplin's character known as the Tramp. Uh, and he, uh, while he's out on the streets, um, he, you know, he lives in this really decrepit place. He stumbles upon a, a baby that a woman left behind that was picked up by some guys who stole a car, and the baby gets left in an alley. Uh, and when, and like, uh, he takes the kid in, and they, uh, he raises it himself, and it's this little boy, and they kind of they they're grifting together, like it's how they make money and and just and scrape by. And he, he didn't just turn the baby in so he could find his mother. No, because like the way it plays out basically is like he finds the baby and there's this cop walking by, and so like to make it seem like he's not doing anything wrong and he's not leaving a baby in the middle of an alley, he like makes it seem like he's the baby's father temporarily, and like he just kind of gets gets caught up in his own lie and eventually just like gotcha. And then when he he takes the baby home and he's like feels bad because he doesn't want to like leave it somewhere, and so he starts taking care of it and, and yeah, he kind of still doesn't return. You to the gave mother. me this movie. Why are you asking these questions? Because uh, well, I've never seen it. Seen it. Um, you never Ever seen it? No. You just gave it to me on a whim. <laughs> well, it's not the rules of this. Hold on. You 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 scoffed at my at my three hour long any given Sunday, so I found the shortest movie I could. I assumed you, you. I assumed you had seen it, which is why you gave it to no, me. No, no. I, I just was literally like, fine. You want something short? Here, here's the shortest movie Jesus. I can find. Here's what's amazing about Charlie Chaplin. So he directed this movie. He wrote this movie. He produced this movie. He starred in this movie. Right. He even did the music in this film, yeah. which I think is a probably important part of the film. Right. Music because it's the only yeah, thing yeah. you hear. Yeah, he played um, the piano. So uh, no. It, it, it's a, it's films over a hundred years old now. It, it just goes to say that you actually watched. A, it obviously, it was a fifty what three fifty two movie. Yeah, and you were still 
enjoying the, yeah. the, the, the Charlie experience. Chaplin is a very uh, a performer who really holds your attention just because uh, he's got a gift like with f- just for a physical presentation where he's uh, his facial expressions the way he moves his body that kind of thing there's a reason that he was good at what he did uh, making these movies where so much of it is relying on the visual because he was just great uh, at doing that and so it's um, you know it's it's stuff where uh, you definitely have to have a little bit of patience because it, it is a silent movie, but he it's entertaining still. You know, like it's it is the the oldest form uh, of of comedy essentially that you're that you're watching. Because you there's the, there's some slapstick stuff to it, but like they're telling a story where a lot of the story has to be told without without words. So, so. the first time that he was on uh, screen talking, they had to dub his voice, right? Uh, because really? he, sounded, he sounded like this. Is it? Is that's that a really? I'm lying. I have no idea. Has, that's I made that up. What? Because. He doesn't sound like this. No, he had, but he does have a higher pitched voice, and like, the, and people weren't expecting that. That's so I, I saw, I just looked this up, but this movie costs about in today's dollars about four million dollars to make in today's dollars, um, and he produced it. He was the only producer, so he paid for this film, and it made ninety one million dollars in today's money. Yeah. Right, so. Jeez Louise. He was doing okay. That's it. That's it. T- today, a movie studio would just kill for those kind of profits. Right? Uh, another <laughs> interesting fact about Charlie Chaplin, the only other person in the world to rock a Hitler mustache, but this was the good one. <laughs> this is before Hitler. Yeah. yeah no, so, but it's become known as. And that's right? how he became the great dictator. I get it. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because I, I've seen the great dictator and I don't feel I've like seen the he, speech from the great dictator. He. I, I ended up because of the speech because right. of the clip. Yeah. I ended up watching it, but uh, his voice is lower in that. Though. It's lower than that. It's so not, I did. Yeah, I don't know. Is that dubbed, or is it him? I honestly don't know, don't know for sure. Because honestly, the, if you watch that, uh, it, 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 he sounds basically like you know, in the course of human events, it, it's yeah, it's and very much yeah. that sounds like JFK. No, no, no it, it's, <laughs> it's it's a bit of FDR ishness is is how I feel like he was performing that line. It was. It's a very bleak and 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 stark, you know, a speech he's giving. We go to space and the other things, not because they are easy, but because, <laughs> because they, are they are hard. Do you guys know that Charlie Chaplin's granddaughter was in Game of Thrones? Yeah, uh, yeah. D- Denise Chaplin. No, uh, Geraldine Chaplin. Yeah, she's oh, a, shit. She's, she's, she's <laughs> Una. Una. Chaplin. Oh, Una. Oh, Una. She, Geraldine, I think, is his daughter. Yes, you said daughter. I said granddaughter. Did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Geraldine yeah. Geraldine Chaplin is uh, quite a famous actress in her own right as well. Yep. She's been in a while. So, uh, you know, seven out of ten, eight out of ten. Like, you really liked it. You thought it was good. I probably give it. I give it like an eight out of ten, probably. Right. But know. a film that filmmaker, film, film people that they, a film that people that enjoy films probably should watch, though, huh? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm never gonna, you know, tell you you shouldn't watch any any classic. Oh, uh, you've movies. said some films that we shouldn't watch. You have. No, no. When it comes to classic <laughs> movies, the stuff, the, the titles that if I remember right, you didn't enjoy Rat Race. The, uh, <sighs> And you're welcome for that, by the way. And so moving on to a 10 out of 10 movie for sure, Rat Any Race. Given Sunday. Yeah, 10 out of 10 as in uh, if you if you rate movies by how long they are, um, then yeah, 10 out of 10 for Any Given Sunday. Oliver Stone's the only person that can take a football movie and make it like three hours. <laughs> yeah, Any Given Sunday this, is, Any it, Given Sunday is longer than football games. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's literally longer than every NFL game. Yeah, uh, but no, I, uh, I, en- I I enjoy this movie for the most part, but it does have some Oliver Stone details where i'm just like i don't i don't don't need any of that oliver stone uh i love the way that he shot the football stuff it's very in your face like it really puts you on the field it has like the the frenetic energy that like those scenes are supposed to have i think it's one of the best cinematic representations of football that there's been but he brings that same uh frenetic energy to every other part of the movie and i did not need that uh you don't need an up-close dialogue between cameron diaz and Al Pacino with a bunch of jump cuts and like yeah, super close-ups really and close to their Dutch face. angles and like weird inner inner cuts of like uh, uh, old football players <laughs> <laughs> and like an argument between Jimmy like, Fox and Al Pacino where it keeps cutting to gladiator shots from Ben Hur and somehow Jeff K makes his way through. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's yeah. We it's, don't go to the end zone because it's easy. <laughs> we go because it's hard. There's a uh, there's some solid performance in here. Pacino is great. Jamie Fox is great. Um, I, LL Cool J. LL Cool J is, is in it. Uh, there's some. He's not great. There's some big dicks in it. There's uh, huge dicks. In there's, it. Yeah, there's a couple of locker room scenes where everyone's just hanging brain, and <laughs> hanging brain. Yeah, but it's no, it's it's pretty good. I I wish it was shorter. Uh, it's 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 a, it's a very uh, visceral movie. It's, yeah, it's very out. It's 157 there. minutes. Yeah, you could have cut a good 40 minutes out of that movie, and you it would have been it 52 minutes. It would have been long. just fine. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good. I'm not, I'm glad I saw it. Uh, the one thing I will give Oliver Stone full credit for 
uh, is really being ahead of the curve on the NFL concussion controversy because yeah. that is a a key point in this movie. And this movie is what 90, 99. 99, 99 yeah. So yeah, it's uh, pretty good, not great, not my favorite football movie. But you're glad you watched it. What would you say it. is a better football movie? Uh, remember I, the Titans, right? Remember the Titans, for what, sure. What's the best football movie? Rudy. Rudy. Is it really? Yeah, I think so. Rudy's a great film. It's a great film. Yeah. Um, no, I'd, say, I'd say the original. For our listeners, we are like 40 <laughs> minutes away from Notre Dame. And so. I've, I've met Sean Aston. Okay. But I also don't give a shit about Notre Dame. I know, but and just, I know you don't. And, and that's you're just not a great like movie. a diehard football fan either. So yeah, it's like, Nate right now is wearing a Notre Dame hat. Yeah, so. yeah honestly, he really is. And, and a, a Notre shirt, Dame sweatshirt. Jesus Christ. Right. And he's got a tattoo of the leprechaun <laughs> on, on his, his nose. It's actually on my lower back. Yeah, okay, it's, 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 it's a, a tramp stamp. It's not a tramp stamp. We don't call them these days. We don't call them lower. We don't, we call them lower back tattoos. We don't say on my back, I call it what I want. <laughs> I have one too. It's a <laughs> frog with a glass ass. That OGs of this podcast will understand that reference. I also want to take a Actually, real quick moment and appreciate again, as I have before on this podcast, Ben Affleck's full back tattoo. Yeah. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, Charlie Chaplin was honored with a tramp stamp by the post office. <laughs> 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 that's a good joke, Brad. I'm gonna give you that one. Pretty, that's, pretty solid. that's good. Uh, all right. So, Nate, how about you? What'd you watch, buddy? I watched a film um, made in 2000, uh, late 2000, uh, called Bedazzled. Have you seen Bedazzled? Before? I have actually seen Bedazzled. You bet your sweet ass I've seen Bedazzled. <laughs> I know you have. It, if it, listen again. If it fell between 97 and 2002, I've seen it. Yeah. So this is a film directed by Harold Ramis, which did not expect. I did not think that. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, starring Brendan Fraser, Elizabeth Hurley, Francis O'Connor, and Orlando Jones. Whatever happened to Orlando Jones? I used to watch Mad TV, and he was oh, on. Oh, Evolution he, killed him. He well, he literally uh, just popped up on an episode of Abbott Elementary, and he was great. That's what I'm saying. Underrated. <laughs> like, he's on a, Orlando a guest spot on an, uh, Abbott Elementary, which I love. Yeah, but like he was he's for been, a while there. He was he, he was, was kind of making was, the career. He, he was a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. This was a film that opened number two at the box office that that year that it opened. What was the number one film? What do you think that week? What year did it come out again? Uh, it came out October 20th, 2000. October 20th, 2000. Ten days after my birthday. October 20th, 2000. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, gosh, what came out in 2000? That would have been big. The year, Gladiator. Gladiator reported. Nope. It uh, is a comedy. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll give you no. I didn't tell you, so it's yeah, okay. It's a, it's a guy. Meet the parents. There you go. So it came out to number two to meet the parents that week, which is odd because you would think that two major, two big comedies, right? Because yeah. this actually did fairly well. So I have not seen this film, and the reason I didn't see this film because I didn't like the poster. Um, the poster came well, it across. Has the, it has the devil. It has the devil on no, it. No, no, no. It's, it's not even that. Yeah. It just. I and felt I like it, it w- almost looked like a little bit like you're going for like a little Nikki kind of theme. And I don't dislike Little Nicky at all, but I've seen Little Nicky, and there was nothing about it that really made me want to see it. This film, I think, is a very different film than the poster communicates. So um, Brendan Fraser's in this, and essentially the film is te- is actually telling a story, right? It's it's telling something. It's got it's a film that's trying to be about something, and the film is about. Um, Many of us wish that we had things that we don't have right now or a different life than we have right now. And so essentially to to kind of narrow down maybe too simplistically, the film is about maybe the grass isn't always greener on the other side, right? And so Uh, Elizabeth Hurley... That you can make the life that you want yourself. Elizabeth Hurley plays the devil and uh, she... um, essentially gives almost like the genie and Aladdin gives these kind of wishes to um, Brendan Fraser. Yeah. And who is this kind of like awkward, sh- schmucky, awkward kind of, yeah. And Brendan Fraser goofball. does great in this because he actually does a couple. Of, so Brendan Fraser doing Brendan Fraser isn't the best part of this. The Brendan Fraser doing these other characters. Yeah. Because essentially yeah. what they do is they, they, they kind of send him to multiversal timelines almost, you know, um, where he's this kind of nerdy character, and he's trying to fall in love with this girl. Um, always the same girl. Always the same girl, but it's in a different setting. Yeah. Um, and when he's in these different settings, he's playing somebody different. There's another uh, setting where he wants to be super athletic, so they send him, and he's like this seven foot five tall guy with like n- he's very, like a very, white very redneck small, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> very small penis. Um, but um, spoiler alert, but <laughs> it's from a movie from two thousand. Yeah. 
So um, I actually enjoyed this film quite a bit. I didn't expect to. Honestly, when you gave it to me, I'm like, oh, I've been avoiding this. It's oh, very fun. For 23 years. For 23 years. years. Um, I don't think it's particularly great. It's not a great but film. But it's very fun. But I didn't I didn't dislike watching it. Yeah. It's, it's again, those films in the late, or the mid to late 90s. That were better or worse than films. Monkey Bone? Oh, way better. Okay, good. It is. It's, it's actually a, it's a fun film. I would watch this film again if I yeah. saw it on the TV, you know. Yeah, I guess I don't it's really a, do that anymore because I don't have cable. Uh, but on TBS, yeah. friend um, of the pod, uh, Charlie Young, we uh, we have several quotes from this movie that we do a lot, including the thing where he's saying stuff in Spanish, but like simple English phrases because he's like testing it. He's like, "Hola Juan, hola Esteban, dónde está la biblioteca? Sí, did esto you, es la casa de mi tía." <laughs> did you see this film when it came out? Uh, did I see this? In, yes. I don't think I saw it in theaters. I actually think I I watched it. Uh, and actually, uh, in a in a way that was kind of driven by my hormones at the time, because it Elizabeth came, Hurley was a babe. It, yeah, it came out on. I think it was on. Is H- a babe? I'm sure. It so. was on HBO at the time, and I was 14 or something like that. So just just all about any amount of skin I could see. <laughs> and Elizabeth Hurley is sexy as hell in this movie. And so I watched it just. I was just paying attention to that, and then I was like, oh, you know what? This movie is actually pretty funny. Yeah, she was kind of at the height of kind of a, a career for her at that time. Yeah, like Austin Powers doing, was a big yeah, thing. For she her. was doing some stuff at that time, I and did so. The same thing with Encino Man with Brendan Fraser. As of course, Oof, of course. Talk about pushing all my buttons. George of the Jungle. Oof. You do love the simpletons. Okay, uh, Ben, did you watch a film? I didn't I, I? I didn't watch Fiddler on the Roof. We talked. So about mad that. at you. Here's the thing. Here's okay. the thing. You know, it's Fiddler on the mo- Roof. I know. I'm a. I'm a musical fan. I'm gonna um, watch it. I'm gonna of the watch pod it. Will know that I'm a. I'm a I'm musical fan. I love musicals. Need, this was a a I'm musical though it. that was actually nominated for. Like film awards, so and it this involves is not a, involves stuff happening on a roof, which you should have been all about. I love gutters. Do you not like a fiddle? I like a fiddle. I like a fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put that on my tombstone. I, I, like, a fiddle. I like a fiddle. I don't. I don't know. I don't, and, 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 and nothing wrong with and, a fiddle. And, and, and like a laser gave a picture of him shrugging. I, I like a fiddle. <laughs> it's a, it's a, this turned into an episode of Seinfeld. I like a fiddle. What do I? Uh, I don't know. What about the fiddle? What about the fiddle? Leave the fiddle alone. What are you fiddle the roof? <laughs> Uh, Stop fiddling with the roof. <laughs> the What's wrong fine. with the roof? The Why are you fiddling with it? It's fine. <laughs> Don't need it. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Bob Sacramento has got a roofing company. Guys, somebody's on the roof. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <sighs> get out. Now, I did. I watched a couple of movies. I watched The Menu because, again, it's like my girlfriend. Which again, Brad and I have seen. We talked about it on the podcast. I know. Brad, Brad uh, Welcome mentioned to five weeks ago. his girlfriend, my girlfriend likes to Brady. watch movies sometimes that you Put don't some assign. respect on that name. and the same for me bailey and i sat down and and she would actually have loved to watch the roof though that's my problem is that i don't get that same excuse because she loves musicals i was like I, I it's the many's on my docket since five weeks ago i've been wanting to see it forever and so finally we had a mem- moment to watch a movie and i chose was, that over I, I, fiddler i'm sorry here's the thing though was, was the menu assigned to you no it wasn't okay it wasn't i just really wanted to watch it and i did and I, you know what but, I you really know what? there's it. enough time in the day to watch both movies. I'm gonna watch Fiddler. No, this, you won't. You won't though. Week. I am. And, and then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep on assigning you musicals until you watch them all. And long ones. Well, they're all long because musicals are three hours because they have a break in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about because uh, we obviously all saw Ant Man and the Wasp: yeah. Quantumania. It's, yeah, yeah. It's the talk of the town right now, and by that I mean a lot of people aren't liking it. And uh, guess what? They can go fuck themselves. I, I, think, liked I, think, I, think I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. What's wrong I think it's a lot people? of fun. I, don't I, know. I, I I actually I really enjoyed this film. Uh, okay, here, so here's my hot take. Uh, this this movie has a stronger emotional core than Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, which again I defend. I I didn't think Thor: Love and Thunder was good as Ragnarok, but people just because it's not as good as Ragnarok doesn't mean it, I didn't enjoy the film. Experience. I by the way I loved Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, for all of its foibles but, and its but mistakes. But a lot of people are like, oh, the worst film ever. No, no it's, it's not. great. It's not as good as Ragnarok. There are, Ragnarok is one of the best Marvel with, films ever made. With but, problems, right? It's great yeah. with problems. This didn't have problems. It was just a good, but it wasn't a great movie. It's a good movie. I, it's a very it's, good movie. It might got, be my favorite Ant-Man, honestly. Um, it, it has some problems. Um, I, I think the chief complaint that I've seen among a lot of people, and this is something that I will push back on very hard, uh, is that the movie has a hard time standing alone without having seen uh, oh, fuck, fuck, the, fuck, other, the other the other Ant Man movies I, 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 or I, 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 the bigger the bigger one and I I this is the one that I do agree with and I will lend some amount of of, of credibility to is that you ha- kind of have to have seen Loki to really 
uh, jibe with Kang as a villain and understand what he's doing. I've, I've heard a lot of people say it was tough to follow the timeline talk if you haven't seen Loki. And I, I, I don't know. I can, they, I can, they gave they gave some backstory I, there. I, I don't disagree, but I, I can I can see that as being an an issue. Because, can I give you a counterpoint though? Well, let me. Finish. I'm not right. finishing right. because right. for my the, and the reason I think that this shouldn't be a huge problem is at where we stand right now. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is now. And still, it has been for a while, one of the most unique franchises because it contains multiple other franchises that make up this whole interconnected universe. And if you're trying to jump into the MCU and your entry point is Ant-Man 3, uh, I don't feel bad for you if you don't understand some of the stuff that's going on. Granted, the TV show stuff has 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 made things a little bit more convoluted, which is why the Loki point is one that I'm more... set. Like I I will be, be like, oh, okay, that's fair. But like... It's it's fine because it's rewarding the people who are keeping up with the franchise the same way that comic books do. And sure, that's maybe not the best game to play when it comes to box office or audience retention, but I don't mind it as somebody who likes all these stories well, if and you're likes the, watching if it If you're grow. in the camp, you're not going to mind it, right? Yeah, exactly. Also, I, I'm not one of those people that watches all of the shows. I, I don't want to watch Captain Marvel 2 and need to know what happened in Ms. Marvel to enjoy the film. But you should watch Ms. Marvel because it's a great show. Th- that's fine. I'm not going to. I just don't have time. I you pick and choose what I stop. You do have time. You do have time. You're so choosing not to. I'm choosing not to because I want to prioritize. I would like to see Creed 3 instead, right? I want to watch things that I want to watch. Miss Marvel's really good. You should watch it. It really is. <laughs> Especially because you need to kind of like just diversify. Oh, fuck off. I'm friends with you. Uh, listen, I will tell you right now, I'm diverse. I've got a diverse group of friends. Not good. I've got a diverse group of businesses. Yeah. I got a diverse. Uh, I, I like different. I like country music. All right. Cutting this I like, off. I like rap. Let's get back to the podcast. I like, I like hard rock. Let me say this about Ant Man though. I don't think it's the the most popular franchise, right? A lot of people just don't like the Ant Man character. Yeah. They're not compelled by the Ant Man character as like some are. So I, I don't expect everyone to like Ant Man. Yeah. Like I, I I know going into it that um people aren't it's not the most popular Marvel character. Yeah. I actually though really enjoyed this film. I thought it was well made. Um what it did that I think is really hard is Star Wars has done this, these kind of things. It created a whole nother world that yeah. was otherworldly that seemed compelling to me that I would actually want to revisit. And it felt weird in the way that a place like the quantum realm should. That's what I this, think. This, for me, this has Which the brand Which is hard of, for a filmmaker, right? Yeah, this, this has the brand of weird that Multiverse of Madness should have had. Right? Multiverse think. of Madness didn't push it far enough. It, I asked you this like, in the text. Oh, you, what's super strange about this universe? Uh, the red lights are green and the green lights are red. <laughs> so, <laughs> Can you believe I, it? What a wacky place. I will say it was so basic what they did in that way. Yeah. That was very strange. Yeah, but here they but do. But not, 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 and good, now, not and good Doctor Strange. It's written by a guy named Jeff Loveness who uh, was a writer on Rick and Morty for a while. And you can feel the Rick and Morty vibes in, in this oh, movie. Oh, absolutely. And I really liked that. Um, I also really liked that this the script felt more cohesive than either Multiverse of Madness or Love and Thunder. It didn't feel like they put piece, some pieces yeah, of, of three it, different scripts they, together listen, and then made a movie in post-production. They kept going with the narrative the entire time yeah. and didn't waver, and it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. And yeah, it was frustrating. Like Things that you need to have happen in a movie like this that are frustrating because it's a movie and in the real world it wouldn't happen, and it frustrates me, is like, okay, after the third time that my mom is like, I just don't want to talk about it, I'll talk about it later, I would have been like, we're not moving the ship until you explain exactly what's going on. You have plenty of time. That's the kind of stuff that really irks me, but that was, you know, I get it for the movie. You can't yeah. ruin the movie. As for the Kang part, I, I, I can kind of see that, but, you know, even with Thanos, which was the major villain of the last, like, seven films, right. for, they gave you a little bit more of Thanos' backstory each time and a little bit of his experience. Now, they in the Guardians films, right, They you had a little more because you had the daughters of Thanos in sure. there. But, you know, I didn't know anything. I am not a, a Marvel comic book reader, so everything I know about Marvel I learned from the films. Sure. You know, they, they, they introduce you to Thanos slowly over time yeah. to where you actually, at the end, you have a robust character in Thanos that's a villain that you actually understand you get yeah. even though there's never been a film on Thanos and we talk about that you get Thanos the strength or failure of a Marvel movie or any comic book is the villain yep. if you have a compelling and good actor do- doing the work and it's a well-written role 
It's the difference between good and bad. Jonathan Majors is freaking he's ass incredible. Ass off here. He's just amazing. He's awesome. He's amazing in this movie. Awesome. Um, he's so. Do you guys get a little bit of again a little bit of Denzel vibes in him? In that he is so patient in his acting, like Denzel is. Yeah. Like when he acts, he's just so. He doesn't rush anything. It, it falls he lets into the, it that, breathe that a category bit. of like, really it's thought, just, thoughtful yes. actors. Thoughtful. It's, it's, it's a very unique skill that can do that, um, you know, it, they're very intentional in their acting, but like it is so incredible to watch. It is a, just a skilled actor. And I went back because I was talking to a friend. They're like, oh, I never heard of this guy. I'm like, you've not heard of Jonathan Majors or Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan Majors. Sometimes I call him Jonathan Winters. I'm like, no, he's dead. Um, also, like, the way polar different opposite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're not heard and and again we do a, a podcast the 10 to 1 and he was on snl last year so since then i've been following him pretty closely these kind of things and his resume is not as deep as you think no it it's is. not no, he's he's only really like risen to prominence in the past like six or seven years and he's and, just, and honestly really in the last three to be really famous yeah. yeah and i feel like he's gonna be in the next year or two oh, with God, Creed yeah. coming out he's gonna be known as probably one of the greatest actors right now if, in america if you are listening to this and you have not seen the harder they fall do yep. yourself a favor yep. and just don't pause the podcast. Do it after. But watch The Heart of They Fall. It's incredible. And then do yourself a favor and go watch the Creed 3 trailer. Yes. And see him without a shirt. That dude is swole. I am, uh, listen, guys, sexuality is a spectrum. Okay, we all know it. I am I am heterosexual except for like two people. In One, this room. Nope. One is uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, three. Ryan Reynolds, Chris The other H- Chris is John Hemsworth, C. McGinley. And, Very and weird. Jonathan dude. made. My God, that guy is awesome. Yeah, he's great. And uh, there's a movie, actually, that I, uh, I didn't talk about this on the podcast when we talked about Sundance movies, but there's a movie called Magazine Dreams that he is in uh, where he plays a this guy who's an aspiring bodybuilder, but he's also uh, kind of an awkward incel. And uh, yeah, it is. It is a very complex magazine dreams. Yeah, it's a very complex performance, and it's. Uh, How long ago was this? It, it hasn't come out yet, really. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just, just, this just this past Sundance. Oh, you just saw it. Yeah, I just oh, saw wow. it in January. Um, it didn't have really great reviews. I'm reading right now. It's but. it is, and it's because it's a diversive kind of movie because uh, because of the character and the story that it tells. I think it's gonna rub people the wrong way depending on how how you read it but he's, sorry, he's, this, he's un- it did it did never mind i was reading another film by that but yeah it, but there was a lot of people that said the director's just a little different right yeah it, and it'll be it'll probably raise you know some interesting conversations but he is undeniably great in the movie so i, I went to elijah bynum's uh wikipedia page and it actually links to his first film which is Hot Summer Nights, which is a film uh, starring Timothy Chalamet, yeah. and that got really poor ratings. Gotcha. Um, that's so this one is getting good. This ratings. one's getting better ratings, but it is still kind of it's one a bit of those, divisive. Yeah, it is a little. It, it's it's a little salacious in some of these things. I Ooh, think in the reviews. Salacious, but um, because again, it's it's top. It's not a. It seems to be Brad's seen it. Um, it seems to be a film that's tackling a topic that's a little relevant. So. For sure. I like it. Well, I'll, I want to check this out. Cool. Well, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum is in theaters now. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you stick around for both credit scenes. Make Definitely sure you... see it though. If if any of the bad film or you know because the Rotten Tomato score is not great, I, honestly, this is better than some of the other it, Marvel films, recent really Marvel is. films I've seen. Th- this I is, liked it better than. Uh, um, this is worth your time. Love and Thunder. I liked yeah. it better than. People yeah. are being grumpy about it, and uh, if you want to see a variety of different takes on it, I recommend you check out uh, slashfilm dot com. Ever since the movie came out on Thursday. Uh, the previous week, we have had a, a lot of stories, including some interesting dueling perspectives on Modoc, uh, a character who is. Why do people not like Modoc? Because I felt like that was actually a fairly accurate representation gonna, of Modoc, right? It's so, kind of, kind of spoiler here. Yeah, you know it gets a little bit. Well, it's, it, it gets a little bit spoiler. But it like, just came out, so I really don't know. But they we... also kind of revealed this in the trailer. Did they? Okay, yeah, as long as it's in the trailer. You, you can see a couple shots of him. They don't put it right front and center. But the way the character is portrayed, uh, and especially his character design, People think that it looks bad, and also that the, the character doesn't necessarily do the Marvel Comics version of the character justice. I personally think this is the best way you could do Modoc in the I MCU. Loved it. I loved it. A, a, a is correct; like yeah, it's spot on. It's it's how it should be done. And I and I also think that the look of him is intentionally grotesque and unsettling, and it's not meant to look like a like yeah. like a, a normal thing because it's supposed to be weird to see the way Modoc. Look looks. at Modoc, and how, how do you make Lo- Modoc look when regular? Listen, when <laughs> I, I I do have the you know the Marvel 
trading cards from back in the day, and I've got uh, some comics from back. Were you I, a comic book fan? I was. I collected the tr- like the collectible cards okay. more than the actual comics. I was into that, but I had Marvel series one, series two, series three. Like I had all the cards, and so Modok is in there, and I remember just when this trailer came out, and I started reading a little bit about the movie. I remembered those cards and I was like, oh my God, it's like, uh, honestly, it's like Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. How do you make this a real thing? Yeah. And the way that they did it, keeping it spoiler free, I am I am really happy with how that turned out. Yeah. It's supposed to be weird and grotesque. And also, they gave the character things to do. It wasn't just a, oh, look at this weird thing. There's dialogue, there's a, there's a history, there's a back and yeah. forth. It was a great way to do it. Some people opinion. just don't think the visual effect looks particularly good. Whatever. I think it, I think it looks photorealistic it looks good and like it just it looks unnatural and that's the point exactly modok is an unnatural character yeah, so. yeah th- there's going to be some level of uncanny valley there because it's it's uncanny how fucking weird the guy looks and and what i love about it is in the film again no spoilers given but they mention how awkward it is yeah exactly it's <laughs> not know, like they're like doing like this is normal yeah. you know yeah. So Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, like Brad said, in I think theaters. Three now. recommendations here. Yeah, yeah three, three strong recommendations. Yeah, fuck the bad reviews. Go see it. Good stuff. Hey, let's talk about some trailers, right? Yeah, trailer time. Trailer time. Trailer time. For you trailer and me. Time. For you trailer and me. Time. For trailer you time. time. Trailer time. So there was a lot of trailers before Ant Man and uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. And I think every trailer we watched for this episode of, of Go Fix Yourself was in there in my theater. I don't know if it was for you guys. I didn't well, get any trailers because I've only seen it. Oh, yeah, because you're fancy. So you're fancy pants. Yeah. Wow. So first one, let's talk about, uh, is it F- Brad Fast X or Fast 10? I'm, I'm an idiot. but Director Louis Leterrier said Fast 10. I think Fast X sounds way cooler. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you guys this. Uh, my boys have never seen any of the Fast and Furious movies. So, friend of the pod, Mike Flores, I am rewatching all the Fast and Furious uh, <gasps> oh, yeah. with my boys. Oh. We are at the fourth film right now in hopes to to then go Push see through. in the theater at Fast 10. So, you're at the fourth. May 19th you're when it comes out. You're at the fourth one right now? We're at the fourth one right so now. So, your kids don't even fucking know what's about to no, happen. No, my, my son's They like, have no Dad, idea. Dad, my friends at school told me that it really, I should just start at Fast 5. I said, no. No, we are not shortcutting no. the experience. Yeah, we don't. That's what Mike Flores would want. Mike Flores would would turn over in his grave. God rest his soul. No, he's not dead. R. Mike R. Flores R. would be very upset if you took the shortcut. Mike Flores doesn't shortcut anything, and neither do the Laux boys. Yeah, but what's interesting? You don't shortchange family. Yeah, you don't shortchange. What's family. interesting? I, so the the fast movies, the early, fr- you know, are very new to me. I've I've watched them in the last couple of days, actually. And then watching this trailer, that is a very, it's a very different, different franchise. Movie. Oh yeah. So uh, two things. Number one, it's gone from it's gone from Point Break heist movie to superhero with cars. Again, movie. we 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 need to remember, and I'm here for both. But yeah. like, they started out the first movie by stealing DVD players. Yeah, and they've been to space. They are now overthrowing governments. Yeah, they're 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 <laughs> pulling down helicopters with a. Dodge Charger, and we're not making Char- fun Charger. of because we're gonna no, no, be, there, I'll be there. But, but yeah, uh, a couple things here. Uh, number one, Fast Ten is what he said it is. Yeah. So you can't say Fast Ten and it's not Fast Ten. Your seatbelts. That's bullshit. He should have just gone the other way. It's and bad said, marketing. Fast bad marketing. Yeah. Because because that's insane. It should be fast in your seatbelts. Yeah. Number two, uh, Vin Diesel looks old. How old is Vin Diesel? He's in, in his fifties. Seventy five. <laughs> And but he but this is the first time that I remember seeing the trailer and be like, whoa, he has he is ill. he's old. For me, the distracting part was uh, there's clearly a couple shots in here where they used uh, Jason Momoa's cousin and uh, deep faked him because uh, there's a couple of shots where Jason Momoa is not looking too hot. He's, <laughs> he's looking like someone's stepdad who lives in Florida. Well, Jason Momoa, you, how old is he? I mean, he's probably forty. I mean, because I feel like he's a character that got a late start oh, yeah. to popularity. But so, he's probably in his late forties. Yeah, I would think so as well. But do you really think that they just CGI the shit out of his face? Is that what it was? I think that what it is is I think that there's probably a couple shots they had in there where they might they might have used a stand-in or something like that, and gotcha. it's just not uh, fully ready yet. I mean, uh, and uh, and they could still work on that. We talk about that sometimes, like these trailers, even when they're yep. even they're a little late stage trailers. Jason Momoa th- is forty three, by the way. They're yeah. they're working up so, to. Ben and Isaac, he looks a lot like us. Yeah, he looks he's old compared to us. We look very <laughs> much like spring chickens. Yeah. Uh but no, the, even late stage trailers, the, the, a lot of times they're working on these movies up until oh, 
completely the, the day before oh, they're, yeah. they're sending yeah. the yeah print. You, you you can't it's it's tough to criticize the visual effects and trailers because they are not done yet like they've done the best they can yeah, they, for, they, for they those have, quick shots to make it look good enough they so have three months essentially from today so they they're still working on this film and they, right and they're working on it and you've seen the you, now it's not like it's packaged and they're like sitting at a theater somewhere yeah. waiting to because see. of the post credit scenes you've seen how many visual effects artists work on these things it's Ant Man and the Wasp by the way we counted there were like nine different visual effects companies oh yeah. That were I hadn't and they seen were that all many... underpaid. Oh, of course <laughs> yeah, they were. Exactly. But I, I hadn't seen that many individual companies previously. Like I oh, feel yeah. like there's even more. Actually, Ant Man and the Wasp is the first movie that ever uh, employed their uh, VFX from Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? There was a scene with Michelle Pfeiffer walking into like a big planet, and I was like, "Wow, that's bad." There was a couple in there. I was like, Gee. "Hey, I want to give you the what I'm what I refer to as the Toretto paradigm, Ben." <laughs> If you had to choose me or Brad to save, who would it be? What How do you hold, choose? Hold, hold on, hold on. This is a very easy answer. How am I going to save you? Is it that like you're you're both hanging okay. off of a it's, helicopter? It's, it's, first, it's too many questions. Give me the give, give me the question, Brad. I'm going to give you the Toretto paradigm. So this is a philosophical paradigm that I'm going to write a paper about. I'm I didn't sure. really need like a full introduction. No, but, just just but ask again, me the same question. So if Ben and I were going to die, and you had to save one of us. Who would it be? Neither of you. <laughs> it would be girlfriend Brittany. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not choosing because I'm not dealing with the aftermath of that, uh, and I'm just going to let you both go, and I'll just be sad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, my, that's, my, a, that's probably best. My yeah. answer, or I just go together because it's like why not just. My go. answer is going to be more practical. Like if I have to like do that thing where an action hero extends his arm out and like holds a person and pulls them back up onto a ledge, I'm saving you, Nate. I, I just you're, you're you're physically lighter. I, I can do it. I can maybe save you. Maybe, probably not. I've got iner- inertia on my side. Though. Again, if it's just because of like our our length of friendship, then I'm saying Brad because you know he's been mm-hmm. with me since the beginning. Is this podcast is ride or been die. Here longer. Right. <laughs> yeah, family is everything. You know what? <laughs> Family's everything. It's ride or die. We, me and Ben live our life a quarter pounder at a time. <laughs> so, guys, I, I got a question for you. What do you think about Ezra Miller? Uh, oh, I, I think he's in some hot water. <laughs> hot, hot water like spaghetti. I'm sad about him. I'm I'm actually even more sad now after seeing the yeah. trailer for The Flash, another it film looks that we so watched. So good. It looks very good. It comes out June 16th. Why this is this still be being released though? Like, what are they doing? What uh, are, well, so it's he, so for those of you that don't know, Ezra Miller has been embroiled in some controversy. There are some que- some questionable things that he has done, things involving uh, young young women, assault, and things like that. There's accusations that he there hasn't are, been charged or anything. Yeah, but, yes, exactly. Certainly. But uh, but it is the kind of thing too where not to lessen the extent of his, you know. Yep. Uh, transgressions uh but he he does seem like he has some mental problems and he is in rehab and he is being treated for them so i do wonder what they're going to do here because the movie is too expensive to not release it and i feel like he's off the grid right now yeah they've already they've already scrapped batgirl this is a big tentpole movie and it's supposed to be like the soft reboot for james gunn's dc universe that's coming here in the future he had nothing to do with this he didn't he didn't But but has publicly said it's a great film. Yeah, and also the the story because it deals with time travel and it's a as a story arc called Flashpoint that had that reset reset the DC Comics universe. They can use that to play with the changes that they're going to have in the new DC universe movies that James Gunn is producing. Um, and so they can't not release it, but it's a complicated thing because Ezra Miller not only plays the Flash, but he plays a second role as a different version of Barry Allen and the Flash you have as well. The same face as me. Yeah. And you know, I I do wonder if there's an apology tour they're going to try and execute and see how well it works. E- either so way, they... this movie ends. If there's one of them left standing, yeah. they still have to deal with him as Barry. How yeah. would you handle it? I would almost tell Ezra Miller, you know what? We're going to send Ben Affleck. We're going to send Michael Keaton. We're going to send all of these guys out to do all of the press. We're going to hide you for a little bit. And longer. they very well could do that. Like they I very almost, well, they very well could. because I can't trust you. Yeah, which is which is sad because honestly. Is as complicated as Ezra Miller is, and I think really as bad as he's been because yeah. he's done some terrible things. He, he's compelling in this character. He really of is course. a good version of Flash. I'm, I um, honestly, when I said I was sad, it's because there's clearly someone here that needs help. It's yep. this isn't the the things that he's been accused of. Obviously, are 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 very very dangerous things. 
it's weird that he hasn't been charged with anything because normally accusations are one thing. Well, he's and then, been charged with things. He's he is well, in like, the court system but, right now. Uh, sorry, he's been charged with things, but and they've been like the but the, it's like the, robbery, the more stuff minor like thing, yeah, like, burglary, burglary and shit like that, which is insane because like well, he stole liquor and he, uh, these are weird like acting out juvenile shit. The other thing is accusations. The, if the other accusations are more provable, then he won't fuck himself and die. Like I don't care about that. If he really did hurt women and, and, and oh fuck off, it doesn't matter. It's a movie. Fuck fuck you. But all that being said. If for some reason these accusations just they don't actually, you know, formalize, and it really is that he's just a troubled guy that stole some booze and has pain pillar addiction, whatever that shit is. Yeah, I want him to get help. Yeah, because then, and honestly, I want DC to be like, you know what? Let's show Flash for a year, and and not make him a part of the shit. Let's let our our main guy get some help, and then maybe we have this productive and fruitful relationship for the next twenty years. Because well, why wouldn't that be the? I pick? assume the the actress that's playing uh, Supergirl. She's going to be a part of the DCU universe. They, so they have not confirmed that they have. Uh, someone, I would someone, assume some, that. I don't someone, know that. Someone directly asked if they like because they are doing a new Supergirl movie. That's one of the things that they announced that, that DC Universe is doing. Someone asked like, so does this? If we're rebooting, does this mean that you know the Supergirl from the Flash movies is not part of it? And James Gunn just said, not necessarily. Yeah, because he didn't cast it, right? Yeah. So that's the hard thing is he's he's inheriting, and and if you're a a Twitter follower, and you've been there, you know that there's a lot of people in the DC fans that don't like James Gunn already. Yeah. But, <laughs> I, but I do think James Gunn, again, as the Kevin Feige of DC, you know, gets, he should be able to make those choices. Of course. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been through this. So, yeah. uh, but anyway, the but Flash... she looks great, though. I like, I, I'm, yeah. I'm compelled by this. I, I hope she does well, and I hope she's continued on. The, the, the chef's kiss of all this mm-hmm. is Michael Keaton back as Batman. I mean, just, ugh, just. I, I cannot wait. I can't wait to see Michael Keaton. And I also, I will defend Ben Affleck as Batman as well. I don't dislike his version. It is a version of Batman, especially actually. I think he does he does the best in the role that they show in the trailer, where he's kind of the um, he's asking the questions for Flash. Is, yeah. Do you think this is wisest? This is going to hurt you. It's 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 kind of not not a not a Christian Bale darker Batman, but kind of a a little bit of a. Not, there's a lot of knowledge there. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I like that as well. But Michael Keaton back as Batman is going to be Holy amazing. Holy shit. I can't, yeah, wait. I can't wait. I, I you know, the, I'm, I'm Batman. Like, it doesn't matter how many times I It's hear a it. cheesy line that I love. I fuck you. I love that line. I will get goosebumps I every knew it was time. coming, and I loved it. I, seriously, of course. I'm like, I wonder what he's going to say here. But then when he said it, I was like, oh, damn it. He got me. So that release is June sixteenth. If not, go go watch the trailer. It's actually a really it's good a trailer. Great trailer. Yeah, um, it is. Really Lots of good it. stuff in it. Um, and I know complicated feelings about Ezra Miller everyone in this studio right now shares those feelings we're with you um it's weird it's a weird time it's a weird guy it's weird we'll to say happens. this but there also real quick there uh, are also, we should correct ourselves I guess because I did I, for, I forgot about this and it's hard to keep up Ezra Miller does uh, identify with they pronouns correct so ah, yeah. fuck. they if, have if, some problems if sorry we about say, hey. Hey. sorry yep, yep. sorry sorry fuck, fuck, fuck. uh but there are also thousands of people that worked on this film, and it's hard to dismiss a full film sure. that yeah. actors, producers, key grips have, have busted their asses on to make a good film for people to enjoy to cancel the whole film. And that makes me feel bad about that. So yeah. um, so that comes out again June 16th. Finally, the film that I'm going to ball my eyes out on, talk, I guarantee talk, talk about you, a good trailer. May 5th. Whew. Uh, James Gunn's final film right now, anyway, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Bring your tissues. Guardos, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. <sighs> Man. Uh, written and directed by James Gunn. The trailer features, I forget what the band is. Apparently, it's a, a famous Rainbow. Band. Rainbow, uh, and the song is Since, Since You've, been, You've gone. been Gone. Not the Kelly Clarkson song. Uh, a great song. That cut Such- of that song is incredible. Yeah. There's obviously some added flourish to the song and everything to make it kind of fill the, the trailer, but it's the, such a good like song. The phaser guns that that Star Lord, yep. yep. and and honestly, it reminded me a little bit of Edgar Wright, like being able to sync kind of the 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 action of the scene with oh, yeah. the and and it's a very very big compliment, by the way, because he's the best at it. Yeah, and James Gunn is good with music, and this trailer is cut so fucking perfectly well with the. It is a heavy. It is a heavy trailer. Honestly, I kind of, if I'm being honest, I kind of started tearing up just seeing Rocket hug another otter or whatever the fuck that. And that's the the problem I have with my life. Evidently, (laughs) is that I'm gonna cry over two absolutely CGI fucking 
characters let me more defend than you. It, oh. Let me defend you here. You should never you should never be sad about characters that you fall in love with because again, like a like a book or He's had such a tough these life. These are characters that yeah. we've we've he, and here's another thing that's interesting about this. Marvel typically releases film sequels earlier than this. This is the longest three stretch film that Marvel has ever released between the first and the last film. I mean, and there's bad reasons eight for that. Nine, it's over eight, almost nine years. But but America and the so world. So we've doesn't. known these characters for quite some time. And they yeah. don't we don't care though, right? This this uh, in no way, shape, or form does that length matter. Like we we are chomping at the bit here to get to it. And I think for me, the hardest thing for this is it is it is kind of like when you went and saw uh, Black Panther, the last Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is you know there was something else behind the film, right? We're saying goodbye to a character. Yep. We're saying go- also goodbye to a person. As of now, we're saying goodbye to James Gunn in the Marvel U- Cinematic Universe. And this is his last film as of now. Again, lots of stuff could happen. As of now, this is his last film here. These and this char- is the last movie with this iteration of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, not to say that some of these might not appear in other films or whatever. There's going to be a lot. This of kind of death. thing is dying. Um, uh, they're going to kill a bunch of them. There, it looks like, according to the trailer, I don't know. I've not read any leaks they're, or anything. It looks like die. Drax might die. I don't they're know. This. We talked about that before. I think, he, I think he's the most likely to die. Um, Jason, based on some of the also things, uh, Dave Bautista is not the best at keeping things to the best, and I think also Dave Bautista. Starting acting later wants to get into some different types of acting. But, but regardless, acting. regardless of that though, because like I think he's just ready to like move on from a franchise role, especially one that requires so much patience and as far as the makeup is concerned on his part. If and it, keeping in shape, right? Yeah, I mean, like exactly. he's like I'm getting old. Yeah. Right? The, the so. crazy part here is that he's earned he's earned that right, but also he's one of the ones that like I don't look at it like he's looking a gift horse in the mouth here, like. Uh, there are some actors out there that have a role. If like, anything, Ugh. he's punching a gift horse. Like, oh, okay, he's strong. I don't. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, it's just not me anymore. I, it's not at all how I'm taking this. Nope. I'm like, you fucking did this great, and and you've deserved to move on to be more prestige roles. He wants that. He wants. He to genuinely be... loves the character of Drax too. Oh, it's he just, does. He knows. Yeah. But Dave Bautista wants to be the guy in Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, Knock at the Cabin. He wants to be the guy that's in. Uh, 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 Blade Runner twenty forty nine Dune Dune. He wants to be that that taken seriously and he can do guy. Those roles. We've and seen he can. Do those roles. Yep. Um, I mean, he did Stuber. <laughs> I like you Stuber. Know? I don't care. I, I, I was. Fine. It's okay. It's alright. I liked it. But like, I want him to be able to choose. He's earned the right now. You know, he he's had a great career, and I'm I'm excited to see what he can do thematically with that moving forward with these dramatic roles. I hope that he still does. A, a little bit of action here and there because he's, he's he is a, a genuine badass. Uh, I hope that never goes. You know, I, I would so love the to see him. Films in films we talked about take over the Liam Neeson role. Of the three films we talked about, this comes out first. Let's get out, let's go on record and say who dies in this film. Brad, just Drax. Okay, maybe and maybe Nebula. Oh, another person that takes a lot to put on the makeup. <laughs> ben, uh, I mean. For all intents and purposes, I, I do believe Drax is, is done for sure. Um, I think that I think that either Groot, Rocket, or Star Lord do go. I think one of the three of them. There, there's part of me that wants to say Chris there, Pratt is done. It's going to be a big, not because they're making it, but because no, there's going to be a big. Th- but like James Gunn's going to end with a fucking bullet. It was. I, I will feel happen. like there's going to be something. I don't know. I think I can I understand think, that you saying don't kill off our characters that we want to maybe potentially use in the down run, and that's the problem. It's not I, even that. I think. Drax would be a pretty big bullet. Uh, for for me, I just don't think that you're going to put Star Lord through all this just to have him get Gamora back and then die. Uh, but wouldn't could, that be the ultimate? And and I can also see them saying like, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna retire this character, but you bring Chris Pratt back in 15, 20 years." Yeah, exactly. For an MCU and film, I could see, and he's in a bar somewhere. And I could he see comes that back. maybe finally killing Groot too, because he's lived through so much and has all these new has had several iterations now, and that would be something where if they give Rocket a new character, you have this Otter character that he can latch onto, who is supposed to be like his, his oh, like I, girlfriend it, character. I think she's dead. I don't know if that's the case. I, th- I, I don't think so. They kill the girlfriend. No, no, no. I think no, no. those are the flashbacks. I th- no, no. I think that they knew each other previously and then they reunite. Okay, I thought she dead in the, and in the they're trailer, reliving I, some. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't those. think so. I, 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 I saw that too. Because I'm pretty sure she's a prominent character in the comics. Okay. With okay, and then they have a no. Yeah. I know. I knew she was a prominent character, but I thought that would she be died. that would be interesting. But I don't think that's the case. Which it, which was part of what I thought is 
because they're going to show. I think that I think it's going to be a heavy film. I it think will be. No, no. And I think that's going to be will part be. of it. Is you also see her death, but it's not in the current timeline, right? I think it's part of. I can see that. Like, Maybe. like I don't know that. Again, there's nothing I've heard, but. Yeah, Groot dies, Rocket kills himself, and takes Star Lord with him. <laughs> and Mantis goes over and there's touches that, him and goes, Oh that, God, and kills herself as well. There's that scene though, and it's it's very, very quick cuts, but there's a scene where um Drax is waving goodbye and you see Mantis there. And I, I never really again, they've obviously had a friendship and that's that's grown over the films. But there was something about their friendship for me that when they're waving goodbye, I'm like, that saddens me. You know, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, Listen, so, I saw the Christmas special. <laughs> yes, they, they were in it. If you haven't seen the Christmas special, you oh, should. It was so good. Um, and I do. Uh, I know we're uh, obviously there's you know certain complicated feelings about Chris Pratt, uh, but like I, I'm not, this I'm is not so many. This I mean, is, this Chris is, Pratt is not Ezra Miller. <laughs> this is yeah. This is his best role. This oh, is the, by this far. is the role he's going to be remembered for. And I, I just, he's so good uh, at this character. I, uh, I caught a bit of Endgame, uh, no, Infinity War, and I couldn't stop watching it because I always get caught up in the movies when they're, they're on TNT. Uh, and he has two great lines in Infinity War that always make me laugh. And it's when Star-Lord and the rest of the Guardians run into Doctor Strange and Iron Man and Spider-Man. And Doctor Strange stops him and he's like, all right, Hold on, like what master do you serve? And he's like, "What am I supposed to say, Jesus or something?" <laughs> and then great, his his delivery of that yeah, is incredible. It's so good. And then later, when they're having like the meeting of what to figure <laughs> out to do with Thanos and Iron Man, look, he's like, "Look, like, I know you guys got your own plucky thing going on." And he's like, "Hey, look, don't call us plucky. We don't know what it means." Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, there there is a scene in the trailer though, where he is screaming, um, clearly yeah. guttural, like like spit. like spit. Someone has died, and there's a tube. And it you looks know, so... in the foreground, and it's like, who's hooked up to a machine who just died? Is it Nebula? I'm not sure he's that guttural well, about Nebula. I don't know. I, I do wonder if it's like a, a thing where they make you think Rocket is dead, and but then he's not. Right, right. I don't know. Or and Gamora, then there's a scene, again, right, where you know. all of the Guardians are walking out, and they're carrying... They're carrying Star Lord. That's right? that, and, and that to me, that's that's probably a middle scene where like he's just been knocked out. Or yeah, I know, or I know. I'm just saying, but like there is just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, in yeah. This you know who's not in that in that scene? Gamora. Well, obviously so I'm just saying she's dead again. Oh boy! All right. <laughs> I don't so, even know that's true. To summarize some of these films, guys, uh, Fast 10 or Fast X, whatever you prefer, uh, May 19th coming out. Uh, the Flash comes out June sixteenth, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three releases May fifth. I'm very excited about this. I have a game. You guys want to play a game? Yeah, sure. So we had a review given to us, and they said they missed the IMDb game. The IMDb game was uh, a game that existed before I came on the show or the podcast. This was actually uh, something that came from the uh, Doug Loves Movies podcast. That one we, back when we were stealing a lot from that that podcast. Yeah. So this uh, for those of you that don't know. This was a homage podcast to Doug Loves Movies. We've changed it quite a bit. We do our own thing now, but we wouldn't have this show at all if not for Doug Benson and, and Doug Loves Movies. So, hey, Doug, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Uh, avid listener. So, here are the <laughs> rules that this is the way we're going to play IMDb game. Each actor has four titles that IMDb has determined are the most known or popular titles from their film or television career. I will list four titles either films or television series listed as the feature or known they call it known for now yeah. on IMDb segment of an actor's IMDb page. The winner of this game will get to eat the rest of whatever Brad brought in as a sponsor. Oh, I didn't know I was giving up my candy, but um, <laughs> as an ad flourish to this game, Nate he, is going to take his pants off. <laughs> look, it's already off. Um, so I will then give you a true or false question. I always like to add bonus points. I love points. it. I love the bonus. So I will give you a true or false based on the actor, and you have to guess true or false. Okay. Uh huh. So, so here. So a couple of things about the IMDb game, Bruce, really quickly. Actors or or uh, 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 agents uh, can actively change the IMDb. Yeah. So it's not necessarily what they you might actually think they for. are known for. It is. It is what the the actor sometimes wants you to think that they yep. are known for. Yeah. So, but we didn't set these. No, no, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, these it's are. If you that. go to their yeah. page earlier today, yeah. again, maybe an agent changed it since then. Yeah. But this is what it happened. All right, here we go. First one. It. Yep. Almost famous. Watchmen. Brad. Oh, I knew it. Billy right. Crudup. Yeah. What were the other two? Do you think? I'm gonna say, the Morning Show. And 
Mission Impossible 3. Incorrect. The Good Shepherd and Big Fish. Oh, okay. Brad, true or false? Billy Crudup was the first choice to play Iron Man. The role was eventually given to Robert Downey Jr. I think that's false. But I'm going to say it's it's true. Because it's the other answer. It actually is false. He was offered Bruce Banner and Hulk. And that does make more sense. (laughs) All right, next one. The one I love. Your sister's sister. Creep. Brad. Yep. Mark Duplass. Correct. What is the final one? Uh, Creep 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. The League. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can't think of another Mark Duplass movie right now. Uh, my favorite Mark Duplass. Is it The Puppy favorite, Chair? No, my favorite Duplass film. Um, Duplass Brothers film, Safety Not Guaranteed. Ah, I love that movie. I got a quote on that movie. All right, true or false, Mark Duplass is the older of the two Duplass brothers. I think it's true. False. Ben is correct. False. Mark is three years younger than Jay. All right. I knew it. All right, here we go. (laughs) Zootopia. Ben. Jason Bateman. No. Fuck! (laughs) I was I had I have to because I was I had listen I if, if I give two of them you listen, sometimes you swing for a home run when you if I do, if I give two he fucking gets it I have to this ha- by the way this is why we don't play this fun game anymore because I I can't ever so, no, so no, the no, reviewer no, the reviewer that requested shut, us to play this shut game shut your mouth real quick <laughs> I can't play this game anymore because I'm not joking. I can't let it go too because he just his I would I wouldn't have one that fires You're, him and I'm like fine I'll swing and <laughs> and I'll say the one and it's not right I, I'm with you buddy I would not have even after the fourth one would not have any so you're fi- you're way better than me all right Zootopia why women kill walk the line big love wow uh, Zootopia why women kill walk the line. Listeners at home are probably screaming it right now at their radio. Uh, It's not Joaquin Phoenix. It's not Reese Witherspoon. Uh, Zootopia, Why Women Kill, Walk the Line, and Big Love. I could give you a hint as well. Can you not join? Or no, are you done? I'm done, I'm done. No hints. Zootopia, Why Women Kill. What was the third one? Walk Walk the the Line. line. Oh, this is such a weird assembly for her. Big Love. I can't believe I know. this. I yeah, know. it's Jennifer Goodwin. It is. Uh, but yeah, that's crazy that they I don't know. have any of her romantic comedies. I know. But on that's here. probably why she was like, yeah. I don't want to be known for my romantic comedies. Yep. That's wild. I, that, I thought this was going to be one that tripped you up because, again, I thought that's a weird four pairing. Yeah. Also, who's Jennifer Goodwin? <laughs> she, so Not Jennifer Morrison. She's the voice of the bunny in Zootopia. Uh, sure. She plays Johnny Cash's uh, first wife, wife. First wife in Walk the Line. Cool. She's in uh, Something Borrowed with John Krasinski and Kate Hudson. She was also in the the Disney uh, Once Upon uh, a Time. Yeah, thank you. No, Once Upon a Time. Uh, you would know her if you saw. Her. I'm if you sure, ever well, yeah, the yeah. Big Love, which is like a uh, a series on like a, Mormon polygamy, a, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Showtime. Um, she she was one of the wives. <laughs> uh, it sounds funny, but it's no, true. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. True or false? Jennifer Goodwin won a Screen Actors Guild Award for her role as Jacqueline Kennedy in the television film Killing Kennedy. True. Yeah, I'm going to say true as well. False. Oh, she did, however, win question. a Kids' Choice Award for Zootopia. <laughs> well, there you go, Nate. That's a great trivia question. <laughs> it is. All right, here we go. It sounded so it like sounded real. How could you be? How could that be false? Right. Yeah. Kennedy, I, I Kennedy, prided myself on making these, good. especially because Kennedy got killed. <laughs> uh, that's a film. Actually, who wrote that film? Bill Nye, the Science Guy. No. Nope. Bill Nye. No. Nope. Bill the Butcher. Bill O'Reilly. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Wrote what movie? Killing Kennedy. Killing Kennedy. It's based on his book about. He oh, has a whole series on yeah. killing Lincoln. Yeah, Kill- killing Lincoln. Moving on. Killing democracy. Here's here's <laughs> one. I, I I think this is where Ben's gonna come back. <laughs> the Marine. John Cena. The Faculty. Oh no, come on! Fire in the Sky. Terminator Two. Judgment Day. Robert Patrick. Correct. Um, true or false? Oh, the damn. appearance of the character Dale Gripple. From the animated series King of the Hill is based on Robert Patrick. True. Ben? 
He said that so quickly, I have to say true. It is true. Uh, Mike Judge originally wanted him to voice the character as well. All right, source code. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Pixels. Gone, baby, gone. Jesus Christ. It's a wide range. We're doing it again? Source code. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Pixels. Brad. Gone, baby, gone. Yep. Michelle Monahan. Correct. Nice. True or false, Michelle Moynihan had a two-year relationship with SNL star Chris Kattan in the late 90s. True. False. False. Damn. Or at least I have no reason to believe it's true. <laughs> I made it up. <laughs> be funny if it I mean, right just throw it in there. <laughs> Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Listeners of this podcast know Mission Impossible is a very common... Uh, movie series talked about Mission Impossible Rogue Nation Mission Impossible Fallout Dune The Greatest Showman Ben Yeah uh, I said, I just said Nope that's that <laughs> No no I, I just said my name before Red <laughs> um, yeah. Jeremy Renner Nope Do you think Jeremy Renner's in The Greatest Showman? Yeah cause I've never <laughs> seen it I don't know Somebody's getting The Greatest Showman God I know. Alright uh, Rogue Nation Fallout Dune, Dune, the greatest showman, the greatest showman. Oh, uh, damn! Who is in? So Zendaya is in two of those movies, but she's not in the Mission Impossible movies. So, oh, it's um ah, I love her. Uh, she's been Rebecca Ferguson, correct. She's great. She's um, gorgeous. Yeah, Rebecca Ferguson has six children. In, uh, true or false, sorry. Rebecca Ferguson has six children and believes, partly because of her devout Roman Catholicism, that women should always be open to having more children. True or false? Oh, uh, let's say true. It's a real bummer, though. <laughs> true. Trent? That's false. She oh. has two kids. I don't think she's Roman Catholic. All right, All right. good. That's great. <laughs> I was going to say, if she's had six kids, wow. <laughs> good good, good for, for her. her. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm dying on the vine over here. I I, I just can't. Do <laughs> you this. are me in every other game we play. I'm telling right, you right now, the remains is, of the this. day. Saving Mr. Banks. Love actually. Sense and sensibility. Brad. Yeah. Emma Thompson. Correct. True or false? Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. <laughs> Emma Thompson. Uh, Emma Thompson is a member of the Overlooked Actor Guild, featuring prominent actors that have never won an Academy Award. True. Yeah, true. False. She, ah! won, <laughs> she won Best Actress for 1992's Howard's End and 1995's Sense and Sensibility for Best Adapted Screenplay. She's... Wait. Uh, wait, no. She wrote it? Yeah, she wrote it. She did. Holy shit. Good for you, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Uh, you guys are sucking at the true and false, by the way. <laughs> well, you make it you're so really, believable. You're really good at it. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a fun one. Kissing Booth. The Kissing Booth. Did you guys either either one of you see the kissing? I have booth? seen that because I have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wait, I, I have a girlfriend, but we don't watch shitty movies. No, I don't. The Bullet Train. I know you both saw that. Brad. Yep. <sighs> Joey King. Correct. What I don't are the even other? know who that person is. What are the other it's two girl. films? What are the other two films? Uh. It's gonna be uh, Summer's End and uh, and a uh, g- g- Gip Switch on the Mississippi. Like, what are you? Do- what is the? No, what is this? This is game? the best part. Is he's gonna know this film? I know he is. The Princess no. and the Frog and uh, Get Filter some, Fish some, on some Rye. Else. The Conjuring. The Conjuring. Did you see The Conjuring? The, yes. I, you know, I'm not a moron. I'm just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and the act, which is a Hulu series that came yeah, out, yeah. Um, that got she actually won quite a bit of uh, uh, praise. praise for that. All right, true or false? Joey King was named after her grandfather Joseph. Yeah, true, true, correct. Uh, her full name is Joey Lynn King. It sounded all right. True. Night at the museum. Have you seen Night at the museum? Yeah. Have, have you seen that? I love you, man. I love that film. By the way, I love that film. Seventeen again. Reno 911. Brad. Yep. Thomas Lennon. Correct. Ugh. Thomas Lennon also wrote the Night of the Museum movies. Yeah, he, uh, and honestly, he acted in it. I think he was just that, a writer, wasn't yeah. he? That was one of the... No, no. Thomas Lennon was in it. He's a, he's a cameo. Does he? Does he? Oh, yeah. He's in it. He's, he's, actually got, a, he's got a yeah. quite the career of writer. I did not know that until he, I looked at it. Actually, him and another Reno 911 yeah. cast member, Robert Ben Garant. Yes. 
So, and this is the one I should have known because I love Rain Around Animal One and I love- I love Rain Around Animal Oh my God, they're so good. So you like Thomas Lennon? I love Why Thomas Why didn't you Lennon. guess him? I, because I didn't even think of it. It's such a bit part. I wouldn't have, like, if I was playing the game, I wouldn't have remembered his like, name. I wouldn't have remembered his I'm like, oh, so. uh, it's either Ben Stiller or Owen Wilson, right? That's what I'm. Every time you say the monkey, I will will say the harder part is that is it Ross's monkey. He has chosen more obscure names. No, yeah, because and honestly, when we've done this game in the past, and this is no fault of your own. Yeah, these are the these are the films and projects that we have normally done. You know, really a list. Yeah, no, no, only a list. You know, like you know, not that not that Thomas Hunter is an a list, but that's kind of a bit. I could have done. Yeah, I I just thought it was funner to go. Oh, it is. I I like it. No, yeah, Brad's really good at it. Right. Uh, yo, yo, sunflowers for Daisy. <laughs> uh, Air Truck Three. Well, nobody's gonna request this. Air Play Truck the Three IMDb was a big again. step up from Air Truck Two. All right, true or false? Thomas Lennon is a big fan of Jackie Chan. He co-wrote the 2005 film The Pacifier with Jackie Chan in mind, but it had to be reworked when it became a Vin Diesel vehicle instead. I mean, he's a prolific writer. Yeah, so let's I'll say true. true. That is true. He's a huge fan of Jackie Chan and wrote it for Jackie Chan. I would have loved to see the past fire with Jackie Chan. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Nine days. Slow down. Slow down. Let me think. Okay, go on. I've never heard nine days, so exactly. Joker. Cool. It's going to be like uh, the... Oh, who who was the grip on Joker that, that Nate pulled out of his hat? Oh, uh, Atlanta. Brad. Yeah. Donald Glover. Donald Glover. No, it's not. I don't know. It's Brian Tyree Henry. No. <gasps> what? Deadpool 2. All right. I get a chance here. All right. Well, say them all again. Well, you should have been listening. I was nine not going to win. Nine days, Joker, Atlanta, Deadpool 2. Deadpool what? 2. Deadpool 2. <laughs> I just watched. Nine night. days, Joker. I just watched. Atlanta, 80% Deadpool 80% of two. Deadpool 2 last night. I'm not joking. I watched 80% of it. Major character in them. <sighs> One of the. Top three characters. Oh, I know who it is now. All right. Just, honestly, one more time and I'll get it. One more time. One more, no, no, just, just nice and easy. Just nice and easy. You're, you're not going to get it. I'm going to get it. Nine days. Nine days. Got it. Got it. Joker. He's in the Joker. So she or he's in Joker. Atlanta. Atlanta. Did you, have you seen the TV series? I Atlanta? have not. Deadpool 2. TJ Miller. Brad, who is it? Zazie Beats. Correct. Yeah, well, well tried. I tried my best. She plays Domino. I, I know. Two. True Who or false? Plays, plays in that. Zazie Beats' his real name is Nina Thurman. False. True. That is false. Nina Thurman is the real name of the character Domino in Deadpool. Ha! Nice. That's a nice little work in. Her real name is really Zazie Beats. Nate, you're good at games. All right. Last one. Jesus. How many are we doing? I love it. What time are we at? 27 you hours. Any of these out, but justified. Walter Goggins. His name is Wal- Walter. Walton Goggins. Yeah. Please, fuck. <laughs> Walton Goggins. I, I have to get ahead of it. I'm trying. You're correct. Oh, wow. yeah. What are the other three oh, films? No. Uh, Fat Man. No. <laughs> fuck. Uh, Predators. Yes. Nice. And, and, holy shit. <laughs> I, I don't know. Ant Man and the Wasp. No. Ooh. But yeah, we're done. The Hateful Eight. Ah. Uh, uh-huh. And Django and Chain. Oh. Huh? Yeah. True or false? Final one, guys. It's been fun playing this game with you. Guys, I got one. Walter Coggins. Or Walter. Walter. Wow. Hey, Walter, his Walter Walt- you Coggins. <laughs> you put some respect on that wow. name. Wow. Yes. No, you no. Yes. No. Yeah, but you got you both got names wrong. Walter, Walter Coggins. Coggins. <laughs> He's an old newsman from 1972. <laughs> he was on ABC. It's Walter Coggins. Hey, you know, you know who I thought was great, great in that Top Gun Maverick? That Tim Cramps. <laughs> my, I said we were going to have a, a game that my mom could come on, and she could be like, Descri- Mom, describe that guy that you saw in... Uh, in, 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 in you, remember, you remember when my brother, your, your son Alex, worked on Nightcrawler? Who, who was the main actor and she's like oh 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 jim guyenthal i love jim guyenthal yeah all right walton goggins <laughs> was initially offered the lead role as joker because todd phillips enjoyed his role in Django and chained so much the part later went to joaquin phoenix false yeah false 
False. Come on now. Yeah, yeah of was. course it is. Yeah, it All right, that is it. Yeah, That's the w- game. Walton IMDb Goggins game. passed hey. on the Joker just so Joaquin Phoenix would be like, mm. you that, review, was, that was not your best question. You review the podcast, you get your game played. Thanks so yeah, much for yes, reviewing the yeah, podcast. seriously. I love it. Unless I love it. Unless your game is Russian Roulette. We won't play that. <laughs> I, I will. Oh, I'll find a way to make a game that is called <laughs> Russian Roulette. You can play it with snacks. Oh, no. <laughs> or the, the jelly bean things. Yeah. Don't yes, give Brad yes. ideas. Guys, we did it. It's long. It's in. We we crushed it. Wow, yeah, gross. I, <laughs> it's long. It's in. We did it. <laughs> I'm sweaty. <laughs> Everybody's unhappy. Out of breath. This is a normal episode of Is Go it Fish a podcast or is it sex with Ben? <laughs> it's sex with me. Hey. Sex with Ben never goes on for too long. <laughs> yeah, it's way longer. But hey. Rate and review our podcast, please. please. Like and us get, on Facebook. Get your game played. Or on the Twitter. Yes. Uh, Brad, uh, Nate, thank you very much for being here. Love you guys. Love you very much. Love this our was a great episode. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, anything else, guys? Nope. Let's, let's get ripped. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. Nah, cheating, eh?